We're here on your favourite local radio station. It's Alex Belfield talking to Rob Newman. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well indeed. I've just watched your DVD. It's unique. It's different. You haven't just stood there on a stage and told a load of jokes like most of the comedians do at Christmas to sell a DVD. A lot of effort's gone into it, and your character is so unique and odd. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, I have never been congratulated for my oddness before. But, well, I mean uh, it in the nicest possible way. <laughs> you're different, and the stuff you talk about is fascinating because you're actually making a very good point. Oh, thank you, yes. Um, the, sh- the show History of Oil, I think the reason why it, it sort of looks uh, like it took a long time to get together is that, is that it did because it was originally a, a, a stand-up show called um, Apocalypso and then and then it got, got sort of whittled down and whittled down and, and, and um, I took all the rubbish bits out and then I had about five minutes so I put some of them back in again and we built it up again and so and, and, then, and then there's a free bonus track which is um or uh, well, free bonus performance. There's me pretending to be a rock star. Free bonus track, uh, but there's another. There's a. There's another live one which is filmed. History of Oil is filmed all beautifully and sumptuous angles and a cost, costume and lighting and set design. And the other one is kind of me in front of this um, backdrop that Banksy did for us and and the, uh, we had basically the Children's Film Foundation filming at these three it was three 17 year olds but they got terribly bullied by the bouncers in the venue and so it became two because <laughs> they wouldn't let one of them film and the other one they he was stuck uh, at the back and he didn't dare move until about halfway through he sort of see him thinking I don't care and um, and so um, so it's hopefully a contrast Is it fun being you because you seem to have a lot of fun doing the stand up? Well I, I would have thought so but um, I mean, I, I really did enjoy that day. But I also enjoyed. There's a little bit of sketches in History of Oil, um, a bit of dressing up. But I've just done um, my first telly series for 14 years, History of the World backwards for BBC Four, and that was even more fun than stand up. Both writing for television again, where you can do sketches and people can fall out of windows and buckets can fall on heads, but then also just dressing up and also doing something. On, as an ensemble, I'm a real loner, and I, and I like to sort of have it done my way. And so I end up because c- I'm quite a low status person doing things on my own. But this time it was really great to have a little c- cast of actors as five of you together. So uh, so it's kind of um, at the moment it's nice to do to do both, just to do to do some stand up when because you also have to negotiate a bit when you're doing sketches and stand up. You say I'm going to do this myself, no matter how unfunny it is. Let's talk about the title for a moment, History of Oil. Uh-huh. Uh, why? Uh, History of Oil, because I just think that oil is central to understanding the last hundred years. And uh, it, and it's never put in the centre of the uh, of the story that we tell ourselves of, of, of the 20th and the 21st century. Uh, for example, you know, oil was a big part in the first world war and the second world war because in the first world war the british navy had just gone from from coal to, to oil and and then and then i'm very interested in it at the moment because of uh, both the climate change which means we really have to keep the fossil fuels in the ground but also with this thing peak oil and this is petroleum geologist theory that we've passed the 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 peak of oil production from now on there's going to be less and less of it and so we're gonna to have to scale everything down and um and I remember Joe Strummer once talking about this years and years ago, uh, and he said, that, uh, they say there's only 100,000 barrels of oil left, so we've got 100,000 barrels of rock and roll. And so I, but I, I kind of, I feel I've developed the analysis somewhat, but uh, that Strummer gave us all the heads up. How do you make something as boring as oil entertaining? Because it's not the most showbiz glamorous subject, is it? That's the challenge, though. That's the thing, because that's the bit where you snap your fingers in the in the face of the younger comics and say, oh, yes, you may do the cats and dogs, the girlfriend stuff, the fridge, but, but I defy you, sir, to look at this table of geological data and statistics and get the large mirths and the big chuckles from it that I do. I've just spent the last hour talking comedy with Paul Merton, and it was fascinating talking to him. He's a big fan of the uh, silent comedy. Yes. I don't get that at all, do you? Uh, I do and I don't. It's like I always want to like Charlie Chaplin more than I do because of the idea of it. And I love Buster Keaton, the story of his life, but I think he's, and I like his films on his face, but I think he's a better acrobat than a comedian. Uh, however, so, so I, I don't really get those, but I bow to no man in my veneration and worship of Laurel and Hardy. I just, I just, I just think it's as. They, they sometimes say at the beginning of any form is when the best thing is so the beginning of pop music you have the Beatles and they clean up beginning of TV comedy maybe Monty Python they kind of clean up and tell history of the world backwards and then I set the bar at a new level <laughs> but um, and and uh, but I think 
in in film comedy just Lauren Hardy it's never been better it's so it's just so funny and and, and I kept you know um like like I really like in history history of all of crazy cameras camera works but I usually try to have for like a visual gag the camera shouldn't move and that's what the Stan Laurel's really good at doing just just and the camera's kind of deadpan it just stays there and so it's kind of it, it's it, it it kind of looks more somber, and you're expecting something quite stately. And so, when of course he falls out the window, it's just it's just it's just more funny. It's like you've got this very square, um, grave board around it, and so it's just more funny when he when he when he and it's just the ideas, the amount of ideas in 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 there, and and also the warmth. You know, there's such a lot of warmth and love, and it's so easy to do sort of cold and sardonic and sneery comedy. And Lord knows I've fallen into the trap of doing that in the past. I've tried not to in the last decade or so. But and there's just such a lot of love in in, in it as well. Do you know? And um, and um, and then other times it's brutal as well because there's one bit where Ollie's dying in hospital, and the nurse and Stan comes to visit him, and he's eating sunflower seeds, and he's only half it. And she goes, "Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid he's only gonna, he's not going to last the night." And Stan's response is, "He goes." Oh. <laughs> it's, just, you know, it's just a brilliant thing well the thing that I love the most is the word veneration I've never heard that in a sentence before congratulations on thank, you very, very, thank much, you very see. much well there's, there's targets that have been set from BBC <laughs> head office that you need to have a f- a, a, a several polysyllables in, it, in every, in every uh, in, in, in interview from now on on the radio I think that's perfect let's talk about you as an act very finally and, and what you are and who you are if, if I don't know you how would you describe your act I don't know who to really compare you to yeah, I think that's the problem, isn't it? It's like Brian Eno and David Bowie just passing the trogs in the airport when they've just done Ziggy Stardust, and them saying, "What is it? Rhythm and blues, pub rock?" Not exactly. Not exactly. Um, um, I mean, you're not Joe Pasquale or Ken Dodd, are you? Trying, give it. Uh, I'll get there, but you know, um, um, it's it's uh, yeah. Well, you want to be your own colour of the rainbow, as as. Uh, Sam Kinderson, the American comic, said, uh, um, "He's dead, isn't he? He sure is. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your own colour of decomposing Earth beneath where that rainbow may be. It's um, unique. Let's leave it there. Well, that's that's your word, not mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah." I think it's tremendous. It's very funny. To me, so far, I've seen most of the DVDs that are being released this Christmas. This has had the most effort put into it. Thank you very much. It looks like that. I'm not saying it's the funniest or it's the best. That's what I think you should be saying. I think it's the funniest and the best. No, no, I'm, I'm not, not saying that. No. Well, no, but, but let me Let's say... be clear. I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'd like to say that, but I'm not saying it. It I is hear, very funny. I hear what you're saying, Alex, but what I'm saying is... I am, and here's no, the I'm proof. saying you might be. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here all day with this one. No, it's no, a no. tremendous I DVD. Don't, I don't think I am. Yeah, yeah. So Thank you so much for coming in, and I'm this really my first interview it. I've done about it, and that's really good because it's gone. It's gone. They they they've, they had you went across America. Of people were downloading it illegally off of Google Video and setting up screenings in cinemas and things, and saying, "Shall we send you the two hundred and thirty dollars we made?" And I said, "I can't really accept it because it'll all be whatever. So give it to whatever." I've just finished uploading it to YouTube. So they all get to see it as well. Uh, well, no, I, I, d- d- I tell you, it's, 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 no, it's been on. T- uh, I, I'm, it's been on, on. That's been the only way people could get it for ages and ages. BitTorrent, Google Video. I always didn't even know about these places until people said, "We just made ten thousand dollars showing the film of, we, we took of yours <laughs> in, a your small, in a small barn in whatever <laughs> you know." And we've given it to the the keep, keep guns legal campaign of Denver. Or whatever. Oh man, <laughs> you didn't let me finish anyway because this is I'm what sorry. I've got to say. It's a very good DVD. Please go and buy it. Because because, unfortunately, Rob can only afford to shop in charity shops. This is what I've learned so far. Rob, you're in show business. You can't be announcing to the nation that you only shop in charity shops. What's wrong with you? The whole peak or thing is going to be less. We've got to get used to having less. And, and it's um, it's it is too much stuff. There's some town in China making nine billion socks. There's, just, there's already stuff out there. And, then, um, and it's... Um, it's amazing what you can get for two pounds and people usually say "Ah, where do you buy that in charity shop and you go as a matter of fact I did (laughs) yeah so that's a double smack in the face through their sarcasm isn't it yes Robert Newman's new DVD History of Oil is in your stores now thank you very much thank you the Alex Belfield In Conversation podcast with daisymedia.co.uk